Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Hossein Ranama. I represent the Toronto City Science Lab. Uh, we are a city we believe we have the best hockey team in the world. Sometimes we have disagreements with our American friends. We are the largest city in Canada, but we are not the capital of Canada. Canada's capital is? Thank you. Um, my research team's interest is to form data alliances in cities. We believe that data is very important. Data is an asset class and trust is a currency. And we are empowering people to have access to their own data and use that to make cities better and use it as a purpose for collaboration. We are interested to capture cities from small businesses, from household, from administrators, and really put all of this data together and really empower citizens and communities to use it. But the way we go about it is that we want these data sets to be decentralized. We want to keep it at the community level. You may heard about technologies like ledgers and blockchains. So instead of moving these data assets into one black box cloud in a data lake somewhere, we are actually storing that data on a community level on a blockchain. So each community has access to their own data and they select a group of trusted members to manage that data on behalf of communities. So as you can see, we can capture data on an opt-in basis from households, SMEs, city administrators, and then we interconnect these data exchanges on an aggregate level so that we can learn from that data. So we are using techniques like federated learning to understand models, behavioral patterns, uh, preferences across communities, and then we correlate the relationships between these models to understand behaviors across the city of Toronto. So instead of looking at the data on a macro basis for the city, we allow the data to be generated across communities and then we aggregate them. And we believe that these community models will allow us to build better applications, better services for the citizens. Um, examples that I want to show you are um, things such as helping people to, to contribute better to sustainability, um, some of the health metrics that they are contributing to. And another area that we are working on is to develop ontologies and semantics for the city and making it available to research labs and startups so that they can build with that. And our view is that if we really enrich our data assets with the context that we capture from these models, we will be able to understand correlations and causality in the city, and we are investing a lot in building tools so non-computer scientists, non-data scientists can actually have access to no-code tools to be able to build such services at scale. And I want to show you two examples of that. This is a map that we have created for the city. We have captured data from three communities in Toronto, and we measure attributes such as uh, waste reduction, uh, energy savings, water conservation, all on an opt-in basis. Some of them could come from sensor networks, some of them are opt-in. And then we will be able to use our models to be able to compare these communities with each other. And that data is very informative for us for our researchers and also for the members of the community. But we are also interested to use this data for intervention, for recommendation, for creating network effects. So now we are in the process of introducing a tokenization framework so that we can incentivize those communities and members of those communities to be more engaged. And we are talking to our municipal administrators to see if we can interconnect this to a tax regime. So can we actually create a scoring model that as communities perform better, there is an incentive for them to reduce some of the things such as taxes or incentivize them with other things. Another example that I want to share with you that we recently started with our collaborative group Earth DNA uh, called the Shoe Collective, we are also applying this technology for recycling. Shoes are very polluting to our environment. We put them in a landfill. 
So we thought if we can use this capability to give some sort of an identity to shoes and allow these shoes to go into a circular economies in these communities, we will be able to actually demonstrate how we reduce waste. So we use this data. We brought students and researchers from the gaming industry, and they are now bringing such capabilities into the metaverse that now that you have a shoe that has an identity, you can actually go and um, create its digital twin, put it in the market, show what you want to do with it, and really build a social network around capabilities like that so the shoes start to go across these communities and it will contribute to the scoring that we create for um, the communities that are engaging. This is interesting because the data is the data is important, but there are different ways that you can manifest it. It could become an application, a metaverse, a set of notification capabilities. So I just wanted to share these examples with you. Um, that there are lots of opportunities to, to use these capabilities and data assets that we created to create tax incentives, to create circular economy, and also a lot of work that we are doing in uh, supply chain advancement. Thank you, and uh, very much looking forward to uh, connect with you.